So I've got an issue with my tire. There's a nail in it. And then, so I took my tire off to fix the nail, fix the tire by taking out the nail, and I saw I have a bonus screw. So I'm actually curious, you know, given the probability of getting a nail in your tire to begin with, and I see I have a patch here, a plug for a previous nail, and I now have this new nail two inches from the previous one, and I have a screw three inches from that previous plug. What's the probability of getting a nail in your tire within two inches of a previous nail? The probability of getting a screw within three inches of a previous screw, and then both at the same time. That's crazy. So we'll probably figure out that probability, so we're gonna to need to know a few things. Hey, maybe I have another one. Nope, only two this time. So I've got three of these within five inches of each other. So how wide is this tire? Let's do it so it's right side up. Tire's eight inches wide. The tire is a big cylinder. I wonder what the radius is. One foot, 12 inches, which means the diameter is two feet, 24 inches. Cool, that's gonna be enough information to figure out a little bit of geometric probability. This is a really interesting geometric probability situation. Geometric probability is a special type of probability where we have an infinite number of possible outcomes. In normal probability, we're taking a look at favorable outcomes compared to the number of possible outcomes, and we can usually count them when we're dealing with something like dice or coin flips or something like that. Here in this situation, we have an infinite number of possible outcomes because we're dealing with any place along that tire, any location in that area. Now you may have run across some much simpler geometric probability questions like, what is the probability of randomly landing in a shaded area? Or what is the probability of randomly hitting a dartboard in a specific location with a dart. I don't know about you, but I don't randomly throw darts. I'm at least trying to hit something, but that's an example that you might run across in a textbook. Here we have a tire. We're looking at the sample space, the place where I have a possible outcome being the entire tread of the tire all the way around. So let's see if we can find out the area of that because we're going to be comparing areas so the first area we want to know is the area of the tire. So we've got essentially a cylinder here. And to find the area of the, the uh, lateral part of the cylinder, we need to know the circumference and we need to know the width or the height, depending how we're looking at it. So we actually know a couple of those things. I took measurements of the tire. I know the width is eight inches, and I know the diameter is 24 inches. These are the two measurements we want because I want to start with the circumference. Circumference pi times the diameter. In this case, the diameter is 24, so I have 24 pi. That's the circumference around the edge of the tire. We could use 3.14 or some other number for pi, but we probably don't need to. Cool thing about pi is it usually takes care of itself. So let's see if that happens in this situation. This is the circumference. Now to find if I essentially peel that tire apart and take the track and I just have a large rectangle once I peel the tire open, well, it wouldn't be much point in fixing it then, would there? So this width of the tire is 24 pi inches. The height, which is across the tire, that is eight inches. So now I'm finding the area. This area will simply be eight times 24 pi inches squared. Eight times 24, 160 plus 32, 192 pi square inches. That is the area of the tire track. Now I want to think about the area of the location 
where I'm trying to get the new nail, trying, where we want to see what the likelihood of getting a nail in that area is. So if we look at what we had on that tire, I had three spots like this. This was the patch. That was the patch. The new nail over here, two inches away. The new screw over here, three inches away. So let's start by looking at the nail. If I want to be within two inches of a previous location, once again, I'm looking at a circle with a radius of two inches. So I have this is my circle with a radius of two inches. Let's find the area of that. So the area of a circle, pi times the radius squared. In this case, our radius is two, the square of two is four, so our area is four pi square inches. Fantastic. Now we have enough to figure out the probability of that nail being within two inches of the original patch on that entire surface. So this is a ratio. The probability is a ratio of favorable outcomes I know it's weird to say favorable outcomes because getting a nail in your tire is not very favorable over possible outcomes. Since we can't count these, we are using area. So my favorable outcomes, four pi inches squared. Those are the outcomes that fall within the target area. I could have an outcome anywhere on that tire, which is my 192 pi inches squared. This is the probability. Let's see what we can do to make this a little more readable. And like I hoped, pi often takes care of itself. And in this situation, pew, pew, pi canceled with pi. And uh, look at that, inches squared canceled with inches squared leaving us with four over 192. And we can simplify that. Four goes into 192. This is one over 48. So I can leave the probability as a ratio one over 48, or if I'm really curious, I could take a look at one divided by 48, and I see it would be a little bit more than percent. Okay. So that's the probability of the nail being within two inches of the patch. What about the screw being within three inches of the patch? We're doing a very similar process. I'm going to be looking at the this one now, this circle, with a radius of three. So the area of the screw is, let's see, diameter, or excuse me, radius, three squared times pi. So that would be nine pi inches squared. So then the probability for the screw would be nine pi inches squared over 192 pi inches squared. Once again, Pi takes care of itself. Pi, pi, oh, units of measurement take care of themselves. Those are gone. Can I reduce this fraction a little bit? Yeah, I think I can. Let's see, is 192 divisible by 9? No, but it is divisible by 3. 1 plus 9 plus 2 is 12. 12 is divisible by 3. Yeah, that works. Okay, so I have 3 here. 192 divisible by 3 would be 64. 3 64 That is the probability. Once again, we could look at this as a decimal or a percent. 3 divided by 64. We have about 4.7%. That makes sense. The probability is a little bit higher than the nail because we have a little bit of a bigger space. What about both of these events happening. Whoa, okay. So I've got this information here. I've got these two probabilities. I wanna keep these around. 
1 over 48 and 3 over 64. So we're looking at compound probability. Mm. So we're looking at both of these happening. So one of them happening and then another one of them happening. So that means I've got to do a little bit of multiplication. The compound probability would be 1 over 48 times 3 over 64. Let me simplify my fractions a little bit here. 3 goes in there, 1 goes in there, 16. Okay, always a good idea to make your fractions a little more manageable. 1 over 16 times 64. And 64 times 16. One thousand twenty-four. One over one thousand twenty-four. That's about a tenth of a percent. Not very likely that's going to happen, but it happened to me. Oh well. All right, let's fix this thing.